Okay, so here's his post, DECA test. Like that's not too indicative of anything. Well, like he's saying post your stash teen edition and then he's posting DECA Durball and Sustanon. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreleads.com. Today we're going to be talking about Ziz. So this is a um, iconic figure in fitness industry history, I guess. He is uh, the brother of Chess Bra, who uh, is uh, pretty well known in the industry. And Ziz sort of uh, you know, popularized the movement toward aesthetics and kind of uh, inspired a generation of younger guys to, you know, chase their, um, not only just get good physiques, but also to, you know, break out of their mold and like break out of their, uh, anxiety ridden, just like, uh, I don't know, behaviors and whatnot and to kind of like not give a fuck what people think and go out there and follow your dreams and whatnot. So he unfortunately passed very early in his early twenties. And a lot of people speculate that it was because of his, um, not only choice of drug use, but that coupled with um, a genetic heart condition. So um, like no one actually knows what happened. No one actually knows what he was doing. But over the years, people have been sending me, you know, like when I do these natty or nots and when I do these like uh, cycle breakdowns and stuff, people have asked me, you know, break down Ziz's stack. And I'm like, well, I didn't really want to. I didn't realize there was videos already made about it though. And that some of those videos had like screenshots of his like forum posts where he was posting it himself. So I figured this might be a decent opportunity to not only bring forth information about, you know, PED safety for newbies who are getting into it. But in addition to that, what you can do proactively as um, via a cardiologist potentially to check if you are somebody who's going to tolerate some of these compounds are not necessarily guarantee you're going to tolerate them. But if you are somebody with a heart condition from baseline, like, you're probably much more likely to encounter issues much sooner than the average person. So it would make you, especially of all individuals, think longer and harder about if this is a risk you are willing to undertake. So I kind of wanted to do some uh, safety information and kind of break down. A lot of people are curious about this too. Like this is a, you know, iconic figure and people, I assume a lot of people would want to know because people have been asking me to cover it. And apparently a lot of research has been done already. This guy, uh, Armian Cassian posted a video in 2018 and he must have dug pretty hard, I guess, because he uh, seems to have laid everything out here. So he has a uh, Ziz uh, steroid cycle history. So he has this footage of young Ziz, and apparently this is his first cycle in 2007 for approximately a couple months here few months and he used test E and an unknown oral. Now I was like, how the fuck would you know that? And then he actually dug apparently and went to, uh, on bodybuilding.com or wherever he was posting, I guess. And like dug through the post to see if he could find this information. Now, presumably he didn't post like all of this stuff. So I'm not sure how he got like all of these specifics or if he's just spitballing or whatever. But like, for example, when he goes into cycle two, there's like a direct post showing it. So hang on. So cycle two started November, 2007. So that's like shit, dude. That's like a month. That's like just a couple months after the first one. That's fucking quick. Um, but again, it's not like anyone was here back then educating people on how to do this shit properly how much time you actually need for hormone clearance before you can actually restart your HPTA. All this kind of shit, like no one was on the internet giving good advice back then, unfortunately. We only had forums like, uh, well, there, like, there was some like decent advice on the internet, that's untrue, but it's like a lot of it has been proven to be incorrect over the years. And it's just unfortunate we didn't have more accurate information back then. It's probably a better uh, thing, as well as like an abundance of it. There was a, it was a much more like, niche community and it was very hard to get you know good information back then um and frankly it's still hard to get good information now and it's almost like a saturation of opinions now have led to a clusterfuck where you don't know who to believe kind of thing so it's kind of confusing in both ways 
But um, anyway, so cycle two started November 2007, finished February 2008. Compounds used Debol, Kickstart, Testy, and Deca. So that is like the classic forum bro bulking cycle, which is hyper aggressive for a guy who doesn't like you would have to know at this point that you're going to be doing blasting and cruising if you're going to use DECA on your second cycle. Like how long the duration of action, how suppressive it is, even in micro amounts um, and just using this combination in general, like incorporating a 19 nor at all, you pretty much told yourself, I am going to be in this for the long haul. Like this, this cycle is very aggressive for a second cycle, let's put it that way. And this isn't even without looking at the dosages. I'm just saying the combination in general. So like presumably most guys back then would have been doing something like testy 500 milligrams because no base is complete without 500 megs of test deca probably 300 to 400 milligrams d ball 20 30 milligrams per day i wouldn't be surprised if that was the full cycle because that's the kind of shit that we were taught to do back in the day this is like uh um i did this combination at some point back in uh i don't know fuck at this point sometime in the last 10 years, but um, um, yeah, so, but that was like sort of the dosage guidelines going around. Like there was no one saying like, start at a reasonable dose of test and like titrate up accordingly based upon blah, blah, blah. And like, this is where you would add an adjunct anabolic based on blank response to your test base and blah, blah, blah. None of that shit. It was just predetermined. Like, here's your shit, take it and fuck off. Okay, so here's his post, DECA test. Like, that's not too indicative of anything. Well, he's saying, post your stash, teen edition, and then he's posting DECA, Durabolin, and Sustanon. So I don't know if this is too accurate of a representation of what he took, because this is uh, not exactly what that guy just put up. But anyway, so we'll continue anyway. So anyway, obviously he's starting to pack on good mass at this point. So cycle three, presumably, you know, we can only assume June 2008, um, finished September 2008, approximately compound Sustanon and Tren Ace. So Tren on your third cycle, like again, probably a bit, uh, you know, quick, you know, so do you really necessarily need Tren when you are not stepping on stage or really doing anything? Like probably not, but Again, back then you have to understand, we didn't have this kind of information. Like I wasn't even, I wasn't using this shit back then, but I mean like shortly thereafter, I was into this kind of shit and I would look at these same cycle designs probably on the same forums he did and kind of like go into them with the same mindset of like, this is what like blank veteran of the fucking forum on anonymous guy blank, who's probably huge behind his computer, even though he has no profile <laughs> picture. He's, he probably knows what he's talking about because he's a vet on the forum, you know? So back then, that's uh, kind of how he went. You know, some guys were cool and they were like actually, sh they would actually show their physique and like, uh, you know, sort of reinforce their credibility, I guess. But again, at the end of the day too, having a good physique doesn't necessarily make you credible. Like even currently, I talk to big influencers in the space, like, and some of the recommendations they get from like really fucking jacked aesthetic dudes that you would think represent like good quality information because their physiques are just immaculate and like top 0.001% physiques that like win shows and shit. They have fucking horrible cycle designs that are unhealthy as hell. And you could other otherwise accomplish the same thing with much smarter choices. Um, as well as, you know, like no, um, adjunct like health protocols or anything like that to actually ensure that you don't have ridiculous cardiac remodeling during your cycle. You don't have massive spikes in blood pressure, etc. No one's really looking at this shit even at the top level. Like not just because you have a good physique doesn't mean you know what you're talking about. This is something that I've come to realize in the past, you know, several years is that there's a reason the top guys have coaches, you know, just, just because you have your hyper responder genetically doesn't mean you know what you're talking about. And unfortunately back then it was like, it's not like anyone even had a track record really we could refer to. It was just like, this guy seems like he's been around the block and like, this is a good, this is good advice. Like I will go inject this fucking drug into my ass now. Whoa, okay, so I started my first trend in Sustanon cycle eight weeks ago. That was in April. Okay, so I guess that was kind of accurate. Okay, so this is him and Chessbra, young Chessbra, um, both kind of like, I don't know, at like the 60% mark from like being a newbie to lifting to like getting to their, where their physiques kind of peaked, uh, making a lot of progress. 
at this size though, do you need trend and whatnot? Like, no. And this isn't to take away from anything this guy did. I'm just saying like, you guys have seen my videos on trend. Like it's an unnecessary compound for most individuals. We didn't know that back then though. I did fucking trend, you know, all of the, <laughs> I did trend quite a bit. I wonder how many, I must have seen this clip like hundreds of times at this point. Like it, it's like literally the fitness industry. It's like what founded the fucking movement of aesthetics. It's like crazy how far back just some of these like random elevator like cell phone videos go. Cycle five results. Cycle six results. Okay, at this point, I think this guy's just speculating at what times the guy started his next cycles because it's not like he's posting anything that reinforces what he's saying. He's just picking random videos and saying, this is the next cycle, this is the next cycle. Cycle seven. And now he's like in the gym. And then this is him. I think this was him like peak, peak mass probably. I don't know about this one, but this, uh, I think was one of the most recent ones where his physique was kind of like at his biggest and yeah. So anyway, there was another Reddit thread that I got sent to go along with this one. And it said, uh, don't know how true this was, but wanted to share. It's like, who'd you fuck? Like who gave this to you then? If you don't know how true it is, Clen 120 micrograms per day, T3, 100 micrograms per day. They were ran in cycles of weeks on and weeks off equivalent to the time on trend ACE 300 milligrams per day. Test prop 200 milligrams per day. These compounds were ran year round instead of cycling and coming off and getting back on. There's no fucking way he was doing that. Like that is beyond insane. Like no one even back then would have done that to be, well, I guess some people probably did. Like that was not too long before uh, the Boston Lloyd generation started, I guess, where guys just assumed, you know, more shit equals more or whatever. And then we soon realized that there is actually a cutoff point where more is not better. And it in fact can put you backwards, but Anyways, that's just insane. I'm not going to read too much into this thread. Um, let's see. First cycle. Wow, this is weird. This is like, ha must be hella speculation on this one. Um, anyways, so what would I recommend? Like, we don't actually know what happened. We don't know what caused anything. All we hear about is like this sauna, you know, this uh, tragic death in the sauna and like potentially drugs that might have exacerbated his pre-existing medical condition that went like unchecked essentially. So um, what would you do before that? Like honestly, the first thing I would do before you take anything is at least get a base EKG, which is an electrocardiogram, not to get confused with an echocardiogram. So this is something that's going to check for um, arrhythmias, um, anything kind of abnormal from a base level of your cardiac function, this will pick up and then sort of reveal if you need additional more thorough testing through a echocardiogram, which you would then hopefully get referred to a cardiologist who would then evaluate you and kind of take you under to not take you on, not, not like put you under, but they would, you know, take you on as a patient and kind of give you a thorough assessment so you can actually see what's going on. The problem is, is in the medical system in most countries, you're probably not going to be able to get this stuff unless you actually have a problem. Like they wait until you're literally having a heart attack to give you an echocardiogram. Like that's just how it works, unfortunately. So you're gonna have to pay out of pocket. Like this is a long-term investment. And if you want to have it be sustainable long-term and if you want to ensure you stay healthy during it, or at least give yourself the best chance possible and see if you are even going to be able to tolerate some of the shit, it would be wise to get a evaluation of your cardiac function prior to embarking on using compounds that have significant amounts of adrenergic signaling. They cause literal cardiac remodeling. You have things that spike your blood pressure through the roof. All of this shit that is going to be very, very difficult to deal with, not only on its own in an abusive context, but in on top of a guy who has a pre-existing heart condition, like that's nuclear shit. So I would, like, it's not that hard to get an actual EKG done. Like some of them are, like, they're very cheap, at least. Like where I'm from, it's pretty easy to get one. And in Canada, it's fucking hard to get anything done. So an EKG, 
you should be able to get done where you're, where you're at at least. And then if you can get an echo, great, that would be ideal. So that is what I'd recommend like as a base, as well as obviously looking at your baseline, you know, blood pressure readings, your baseline resting heart rate, um, stuff like that, just to make sure that you are even like in a space where you have the ability to tolerate shit, you know, also your age, your, your body weight beforehand, your body fat percentage, insulin resistance markers. Like a lot of this shit is basic stuff that you should be looking at anyways, even if you're not trying to be enhanced. But at the end of the day, this is the kind of stuff that will compound your risk. If you just jump into things haphazardly without pre it's like assessing your pre-existing um, risk or, you know, baseline function in, uh, like ideally as many organs as possible, but probably most importantly, your heart. So that is what I would recommend, you know, proactively as a guy who is, if this is something you're very serious about long-term and you know you're gonna be blasting and cruising for years and years and years, you would be wise to do this beforehand. And then you may find something out that may give you information that you realize, okay, I'm one of these individuals who unfortunately, um, is not going to be able to tolerate this shit. And I should probably steer clear because I have far less, I don't know, just tolerability of this organ. Cause it's already in a suboptimal state. You know, like if you have a pre-existing heart condition, there's a lot of shit you should be doing off the bat as a natural to try and prevent yourself from having issues early and adding in things that exacerbate the condition certainly wouldn't be one of them. So anyways, take from that what you will. Hopefully that was educational and uh, you learned something and um, obviously rest in peace Ziz. He was a inspiration to a lot of people and um, it would be very interesting to see what the fitness industry would be like if he was still around. That's all I have to say. So anyways, Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplace underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I am associated with in the video description below. Uh, my TRT clinic, um, Gorilla Mind, Nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas. I designed myself from scratch. Um, I pre-designed lab test panels I make myself. Um, and anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.